السلام عليك زين الأنبياء السلام على الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا فتحسبهم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد المفتاح باب رحمة الله عدد ما في علم الله صلاة وسلام دائمين بدوام ملك الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا وحبيب قلوبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون أما بعد فيا عباد الله إني أصيكم ونفسيا بتقوى الله فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين الحمد لله In our previous khutbah we discussed the realities of La ilaha illallah and the realities of La ilaha illallah are an ocean that can never be encompassed. They are essentially the realities on which this entire creation is continuing. They are the realities on which that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to keep the world continuing as long as there is someone on this world saying La ilaha illallah. And there is in no way, shape, or form is it possible for any created being to truly express the meanings of La ilaha illallah. For to do so would be to express the reality of Allah's greatness, the reality of Allah's oneness, and the qualities and attributes and the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never be encompassed. And the only one who knows Allah truly is Allah. And the greatest, the greatest aspect of Allah's knowledge is his knowledge of himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, it is, uh, there is sufficient understanding from the Prophet Sallallahu taught to us about La ilaha illallah to free us from the, the shackles of being slaves to creation and freeing us to be slaves of the Creator only and from being in need of the creation to being only in need of Allah and, from, and to free us up from, being, to ha from having hope in creation or fear of creation in, in and of themselves, right, and to free us to have only free of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to be free from the fear of all other. And this is why the Prophet وسلم, even to the young, of, the young companions of his, he was teaching them the realities of, of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Right, he taught them, he taught them at very young age. And we know the hadith of Ibn Abbas alayhi Ridwanullahi ta'ala, who is the nephew of the Prophet وسلم, where the commentators mentioned that he is just a teenager at this time. And the Prophet وسلم, told him that I'm going to teach you some words, right, and we'll just translate them. He says, Oh young man, ya yeah, ghulam, and the ghulam is the one who just starts showing signs of maturity. Right? There's a little bit of stubble growing, there's a little bit of a mustache growing. This is a young man, this is a young boy. So the Prophet ﷺ told him to protect Allah and he will protect you, meaning protect the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life. Protect the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your in yourself, in your household, in your children, in your spouses, in, in every aspect of your life, and Allah will protect you. Protect Allah and you will find him before you. You will find his help, his assistance, his care, his concern, his his taking care of your affairs right before you. Make yourself known to Allah in times of ease, and He will know you in times of difficulty. Make yourself known to Allah in times of ease, and He will, make, he will know you in times of difficulty. And this, just as a small tangent from this, there is a, a beautiful narration from the Prophet ﷺ where uh, the, uh, he expresses that the angels recognize the voices of certain servants of Allah because they're constantly calling upon Him. So the angels know the sound of their voice right? to the extent that if this person were to raise their hands and call upon Allah, the angels will come hastily because they know that this person has a connection with Allah, that this person is regular in praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what they'll say, right? but the person who doesn't call in upon Allah only in times of difficulty, then they start to raise their hands. So the angels, they say, صوت غريب من مكان معروف. 
Right? There is right, a very foreign sound, a foreign voice, a voice we've never heard before, right? in a place that we know well. Right? It's in Makanji, Pennsylvania, Lehigh Valley. Right? We know the place, but who's this voice? We never heard this voice anymore before, right? because the person never raises their hand, except when times are difficult. Right? But when we, when Yunus alayhi salam, right, the Prophet Jonah, when he was in the in the belly of the of the fish. Right? He called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels, they said, Sawtun ma'roof, a voice that we know very well. Fi makan in gharib, in a place that we have no idea where this place is. Where is he? Right? But they knew his voice very well because he was a person who was constantly calling on Allah in times of ease as well as times of difficulty. So the Prophet is teaching Ibn Abbas, make yourself known to Allah in times of ease and he will know you in times of hardship or in times of difficulty. Know that whatever afflicts you could never have missed you. Right? And whatever misses you could never have afflicted you. You didn't get that promotion. You didn't get that job. You didn't get that, uh, that acceptance into that college. It could never have happened because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed otherwise. And if something happens, someone gets sick or someone uh, loses a job or someone loses something that there was beloved to them, it, it could never have happened any other way. This is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a solace in that. And he continues, he says, and know that if the entirety of the creation were to gather to give you something that Allah did not decree to give you, they will never be able to do so. Or if they were to gather to avert from you something that Allah intended to afflict you, they will never be able to do so. So what is the result? If a person has that type of certainty, they realize that everything is from Allah that everything is decreed by Allah and nothing in creation can happen, not even a leaf falling from a tree, not even a blade of grass blowing, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it into existence. And unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed that thing to happen. Right? And these are the, the realities of our creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person has certainty in those realities, then what, do they, what should they do? How should that manifest in their relationship with Allah? He tells Ibn Abbas, so if you must ask, if you must ask for something, then ask from Allah. Then ask from Allah because the reality is that if you, ask, you can ask all of the creation, but if Allah didn't decree it, it's not going to happen. Right? And, right? But if you ask Allah, right? he's the one who can call, who, he's the one who can bring about what you need. Right? And he said, if you seek help, then seek it from Allah. Right? And know that victory is with patience, and relief is with difficulty, and with every difficulty comes ease. That these are lessons from the Prophet Sallallahu to a very young boy. Right? Because the Prophet Sallallahu nurtured their hearts. He nurtured their hearts to be able to understand these realities, and this is why they became who they became later on. This is why Ibn Abbas became one of the, the, the most deeply well-versed in understanding of the Qur'an. They call him Tarjuman al-Qur'an. He is the interpreter of the Qur'an. Now, to, to bridge this back to what we were discussing in our previous khutbah about the means, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sole giver of all benefits, and he's the sole giver of all harm, because nothing can happen except that Allah decreed it. Right? But we may, even though we may see Allah's decree manifest in the world with cause and effect, with means. If Allah wants to cure somebody, it may be that that person took medicine and then Allah gave them the cure. It may be such, right? even though the medicine was just a means. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who gave the cure. Right? Right? Bridging off of that, one extra point that we wanted to kind of talk about today is that Allah never in the Qur'an... He never commands people to outward means. He never commands us to take worldly means. But he only commands us to take religious means. You'll never see in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena utlubu tijara, O you who believe, right, seek out a job, right, or get a second job. Right? And I, I guarantee you, inna narazukuka fulusan kathira. You'll never hear that, like, oh, you believe, go out and get a job, and we will definitely give you a lot of money. Right? You'll never hear in the Quran, oh, you believe, go and get this, this uh, medicine, and we will definitely cure you. We will never have these types of commandments in the Quran. And I'm not, again, not saying that those things are, are wrong. Right? But Allah doesn't command to those things. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does command to right, is acts of worship. 
as the keys to his treasures, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, Allah doesn't promise. Give, Allah does not put any of his promises in worldly means. There is no promise that if you take the medicine, you'll be cured, or if you get the or if you get this new job or this extra hours that you'll get more, be- more wealth. There is no promise in that. But Allah does promise that if you have taqwa, if you have tawakkul, if you have prayer, if you have fasting, if you have patience, right? All of the promises of Allah are attached to worships, are attached to the relationship between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we are in need, or if we are struggling, or if things aren't going our way, and if we need help, right? Even though we may outwardly take, uh, take on the means, we might seek out that job, we might seek out that medicine, or whatever it may be, however this manifests, we need to remember to prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to prioritize going to Allah first. Right? And this is, in reality, this is the first step is to check the heart. The first step to check where we are with la ilaha illallah, where we are with that there is none in creation that is doing except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First thing we need to check is when everything goes wrong, right, where is my heart? Am I, is the first thing that comes to my heart, oh, I need to call so-and-so, they can help me. Or I can call so-and-so, maybe they can lend me some money. Or I can, or I can go to this place and, they, and they'll, they'll help me. I know a really good doctor. Is that the first thing that comes in our hearts? Or is it that? Indeed, we belong to Allah, and to Him will be returned, and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And because Ibn Abbas, a very young boy, he understood these realities, that if you need help, ask Allah. Ask Allah. Then after that, you can take on the means as you wish, but check the heart. We need to check the heart, myself first and foremost, that if something is going wrong, the first thing comes in our heart is Allah. Right? and we see that Allah is the solution, and that there is no other solution except that it's, that it's from Allah, then that is a healthy heart. That is a healthy iman. Those, that is the, the precipice of true certainty. That is the path of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa so we don't neglect the outward means. We're not going to sit there and just wait for our, 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 our request to come about, but we must seek out, first and foremost, our, our heart being attached to Allah, our certainty is on Allah, and then to find what are the religious means that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us in this type of situation. If I'm having this difficulty, the Prophet said to do this. If I'm having this difficulty, the Prophet gave this dua, this supplication, or this act of worship to do, and that should be, we should have more conviction in that than anything else. Right, so we wanted to look at some of the promises that Allah gave in the Quran, which are attached to uh, acts of worship. Right, so one of the most important and arguably uh, the most frequently mentioned in the Quran is taqwa. To have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqwa means to, have to, to fulfill the commandments of Allah and to abstain from his prohibitions both inwardly and outwardly out of a sense of love and reverence for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the definition of taqwa. That whatever Allah wants me to do, that's what I will do. Right? And, the Prophet, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says... And whoever is mindful of Allah, whoever has this quality of taqwa, right? Uh, he, meaning Allah, will make a way out for them from every, uh, right, from any difficulty, every and any difficulty. Right? One of the the, the prophets that I said, he described that if the entire sky was was metal and the the ground was all metal and the sun was blazing as hot as it possibly, I mean, the metal is a conductor of heat, right? And you're trapped between these two things and there's no way out. Right, the Prophet ﷺ explained that if the person had taqwa, Allah would give him a way out. Right, to that extent, wasallam. So the verse says that he will make a way out for them from every difficulty and provide them from sources they could never even imagine. Why? Not because of the means, but because of the means of taqwa. Because of having mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the most uh, frequent times when we slip, when we start to disobey Allah, when we start to neglect the commandments of Allah or we start to fall into the prohibitions of Allah is when things go difficult and we see that those are the only means to achieve those things. But that thought is incorrect and it, it's indicative of a lack of certainty. Right? So if someone, they lost their job, right? they, they, financially they're in stress, the, the bills are stacking up, right? everything is difficult. Right, what what would they do? Oh, I can take, I, I can get a part-time job at this bar. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Who is the provider? 
right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider, right? Or uh, if, I, if only I take this extra couple hours and I'll just miss Jumu'ah for a couple months and then I'll be fine after that. Astaghfirullah. Right? This is, right? the missing of Jumu'ah is one thing, but what is the state that that is pointing towards? What is the state that's in our heart that's making us do those things? Right? And these are, these happen quite often, and the Prophet ﷺ said, La, la, do not allow any delay in your provision cause you to seek it in the haram, in that which is forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas Allah says that whoever is mindful of Allah, whoever says no, I will never, I will never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah can call, solve my situation. And it is inconceivable that Allah will help me by my disobeying him. Right? If whoever has that mindset, Allah will give them a way out from every difficulty, and provide them from sources they could never imagine. And Allah says, right, and whoever puts their trust in Allah, he alone is sufficient for them. Certainly Allah achieves, achieves his will. Allah has already set a destiny for everything. Right, so the first and most important is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, especially in difficulty. And that is the definition of sabr, the definition of patience, is not just to wait for the difficult thing to stop, to, to end, right? Patience is to, to live a life of taqwa even when things are difficult. To only do that which is pleasing to Allah even when things are hard. Uh, the second is doing more good deeds. Things are going difficult, right? we need to check. Right? Maybe I'm, I'm lacking in my good deeds. Maybe I'm lacking uh, in my acts of worship. The Prophet some talked about uh, a person who Allah has destined for them a very high level in paradise, but their deeds were not enough to get them there, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will give them tests and tribulations in this world so that they will raise in their ranks to get to that station, right? However, if they were to do more good deeds, right, they would have gotten to that place without the tribulations, right? So, uh, and this is uh, very common that people have s problems with their spouse, there's trouble in the house, things aren't going well, everything's wrong. We need to check how is our acts of worship. Because the more acts of worship, right, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever does good, whether male or female, is a, and, and is a believer, we will surely bless them with a good life. With a good life. The, the good life that everyone is imagining, everyone is seeking but they're seeking it in other ways than the way that Allah has promised. Right? The way that Allah has promised is good deeds and faith. Right? And he says that we will surely bless them with a good life, hayatin tayyiban, a, a good life, and we will certainly reward them according to their best, the best of their deeds. Another means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet can command us to is to unite our concern, to make our concerns one concern. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said that whoever makes their concerns one concern, right, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice them all of their other concerns. Right? If we had time to list out all of our concerns, we all have a lot of concerns. Right? Right? Financial concerns, medical concerns, family concerns, children concerns, and that's a big one. Right? You have a sub list on that one, it's like many bullet points. Right? So many concerns in this world, especially with the changing of times and especially with this pandemic and concerns, right? Uh, a list that we don't see any foreseeable end to, right? But the Prophet ﷺ is promising us, and these are promises from the words of the most truthful of all who all creation, the Prophet ﷺ. He said that whoever makes all of their concerns and just unifies it to one, right? Leave everything aside and make your only concern the hereafter. How will I fare on the day of judgment? Right? How will I fare when my soul comes out of my body and I am put into my grave and I'm all alone and all that I have with me is my deeds, the deeds that I did in this world? If that is our soul and only concern, Allah will take care of everything else. Allah will take care of the children. Allah will take care of the finances. Allah will take care of the health. Allah will take care of the society. Right? If we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And one last uh, hadith. That uh, regarding another means for provision, right, or for the Prophet ﷺ promised that whoever desires that his provisions be expanded, that not necessarily more in amounts, but the, the barakah, the blessing that's in one's provision, that a little bit will go a lot longer away. Sometimes we get paid, right, and it just seems like it's gone right away. Right, what happened? 
Right? The same, and then sometimes that same amount, and somehow at the end of the month, there's still more left. We, we, we got groceries twice, we got this, we got that, and there's still more. Right? That's called baraka. That's called baraka. And the word baraka is a beautiful word in Arabic. Uh, they, the word baraka comes from when a camel would lay down. So if a camel lays down, it's called baraka tinaka. Right? The camel has laid down, it's called baraka. So even a skinny camel, when it would lay down because its stomach would press against the ground, it would look bigger than it really is. Right? So it's not actually big, but it, it, it looks bigger, it perceives bigger. Uh, it's perceived bigger. Right? So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does to your wealth. Allah does it with your knowledge. Allah does it with your lifespan. That he will give, it will be the same number, right? but there's so much more benefit in it. Right? So the Prophet said that whoever desires that his provisions be expanded and his lifespan be extended, then let him join his family ties. Right? Things are, money is tight. Things are not adding up. Right? Uh, health problems and everything. Right? How is my relationship with my mother? When's the last time I reached out to my mother? When's the last time that I, I, I spoke to my uncles or my aunts? When's the last time I reached out to my sibling who we've been uh, beefing with for a while now and I, we kind of cut each other off? And then all of a sudden, if we thought about it, that's when all the tribulation started right? because we broke those ties. Right? And this is, right? Allah repeats many times in the Quran that day, يَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا يُصَلُ That they cut off that which Allah commanded to be joined which is the family ties. Right? And even if it's just reaching out with a salam, assalamu alaikum, how have you been? How, I haven't seen you in a while. Or to bring a gift, or to send, uh, to send a gift. And these things bring a blessing because Allah has attached his promises of assistance for his servant in these acts of worship. And we know that the Prophet sallam, lived these realities to the fullest extent. He said, salam, as they describe him, إِذَا هَمَّهُ الْأَمَرْ فَزِعَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ That when any matter concerned him, any issue happened, or something went wrong, he turned right to salat. Immediately he went to the masjid. Immediately he said, Allahu Akbar. And we just mentioned one quick story. The Prophet said, salam, and this happened on multiple occasions, but this specific occasion was quite intense. He did not have any food, sallallahu alayhi wa And he went to each of the houses, and he asked for food from his family, and they said that we have nothing. And normally, he would say, okay, inni idhan sa'im, right? Uh, I'm going to fast in that case. But this day, it was already four, it was the fourth day that he had no food whatsoever, right? So he said, I said, he said to say that Aisha, his wife, our mother Aisha, he said, I'm going to the masjid to ask my Lord. Right. This is his. This is was his reality. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His example. So, say that Aisha, while he, while the Prophet was in the masjid, Uthman ibn Affan, one of the great companions of the Prophet, came and said, "Where is the Prophet?" Right. And Aisha said, "He's in the masjid. He, uh, he was in extreme hunger. He couldn't wait anymore. So he started to ask Allah. Right. Otherwise, he would just be patient. He wouldn't even ask Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right. But he went to ask Allah subhanahu wa taala. So Uthman said, "Why didn't he ask me? I would have given him food right away." Why didn't he ask uh, Abdurrahman bin Auf? Why didn't he ask so-and-so? Why didn't he ask so-and-so? And he listed all of the Sahabis that if he would just touch their door, they would have given a feast. Right? He didn't ask any of them, even though they were wealthy. They were wealthy Sahaba. Right? So Uthman ibn Affan, he ran home. He brought food for them to, to cook later, and he brought food that was already made. And then the Prophet ﷺ came back, and he, he walked in the house, and he said to Aisha, where is this food, for, food from? This is the fourth day, not a single morsel has entered his mouth. He said, where is this food from? She, she said, the earth man brought it. And the prophet raised his hands to the heavens and to the, to the sky. And he said, oh Allah, I am pleased with earth man. You be pleased with him. Oh Allah, I am pleased with earth man. You be pleased with him. Oh Allah, I am pleased with earth man. You be pleased with him. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa The prophet sallam, understood that Allah is the only one who can give. Right? It is, there's nothing wrong with asking, but where is the heart? Where is the heart? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in such an intimate connection like that the Prophet had with him, right, that we turn to none other except for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm ad-deen wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Ashadu an la ilaha ilallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Ya ibadallah, inni wasiyukum wa nafsi abi taqwa Allah Amma ba'd, Alhamdulillah, amongst the beautiful gifts that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us is two things Two things that we really need to uh, begin in our life and to establish as a routine in our life and something that we go to when things are when we are in need the first is the prayer of need salatul haja and the prophet sallallahu taught the companions that if he said sallallahu uh, alaihi that whoever has a need of allah or of any of the children of adam meaning humans right let them perform the ablution the pre prayer washing right and do so well and then pray two units of prayer Right. Thereafter, he should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then send blessings on me, and then say the following dua. And this is a dua that we should all learn. We should teach our children this dua. We should teach our spouses this dua. Right? The, and the translation is, right, uh, the one, uh, uh, oh, oh Allah, the one who none is worthy of worship except you, the most forbearance, the generous, Glorified is Allah, Lord of the mighty throne. Praise belongs to Allah, Lord of the worlds. I ask you, O Allah, all that brings about your mercy and certain forgiveness from you and the attainment of all good and protection from all sin. Do not allow any sin of mine to remain except that you have forgiven it, nor any worry except that you have removed it. And no need, and this is when the person mentions that need, and no need which is pleasing to you except that you have fulfilled it. Right? And in another narration, and you have made it easy for me, O, merc o most merciful of all. Right? And this is a dua that the Prophet taught the companions. And he taught them how to say these, uh, these words and how to turn to Allah when they are in need. Uh, the second is the, the night prayer, the prayer just before the Fajr. And we know the children of, uh, of Ya'qub, the Prophet Jacob, that they came to him and asked him for, for, to ask Allah to forgive them. On, her, on their behalf, and he said, so astaghfiru lakum rabbi, eventually I will do it. And the scholars mentioned that, why did he say sofa, eventually? He, they said that he wanted to wait until the last third of the night during his tahajjud prayer, until he, during his night prayer. And because of the blessing time uh, that is there, the Prophet said, uh, that the mercy of your Lord, blessed and exalted, is he descends to the lowest heaven when the last third of the night remains. And he says, Allah says, who will call upon me that I may respond to their call? Who will ask me that I may give them? Who will seek forgiveness from me that I may forgive them? Right? This, is a, this is an offer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that happens every single night. Anyone has a need, wake up for tahajjud. Anyone has a difficulty, wake up for tahajjud. Even if it's not your need, it's a need of someone who you love, a need of someone you care for, a need of someone who is close to you. Then turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him and Allah promises that whoever calls upon him with sincerity that he will answer their call and he will give them that which they want and way beyond what they want. Beyond what they want. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to, to be of people whose conviction and reliance is in the Lord of the worlds, the creator of the heavens and the earth and not anyone in creation. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ورضي الله تعالى عن عن سادتنا الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى جميع ساداتنا الصحابة الكرام وأهل بيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المطهرين من الأرجاس وعلينا معهم وفيهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لي للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات أو الله we turn to you in absolute desperation with our hands spread out in humility begging you to fulfill our worldly, religious, and spiritual needs in this world and the next for everyone present here today and everyone listening and our families and our loved ones, our children, our parents, and all the Muslims in the world. And we ask you on behalf of those who have not yet seen the true beauty and the light 
of Islam, that you fulfill their need of a connection with you by guiding them to Islam and toward the fulfillment of their life's purpose. And we seek in you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your divine pleasure and by following the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right, to attain the blessings of this world and of the next. Ya Arham ar rahimin Ya Arham rahimin Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhin qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allukum tadhakkaroon udhkuru Allah al-azim yadhkurkum wa shkuruhu ala ni'amihi yazidukum wa la dhikru Allah akbar wallahu ya'lama ma tasna'oon al-qim as-salam Thank you for watching one of Al Maqasid's online educational offerings. Our mission at Al Maqasid is to cultivate holistic learning environments rooted in knowledge, devotion, and service. For more information, please visit our website at almaqasid.org and connect with other online content at almaqasid.org/connect.